Are you sick of going back to the same few references for all of your projects? Well, I am. Well, you can go ahead and delete that folder because we're going to show you five of the absolute best of the best in design and animation right now. From music videos to social posts, this episode is absolutely packed. Stick around to the end to find who our top pick this month is. We've picked out some of the most unique and innovative projects we know about. And while we only had five slots for the video this month, we'd love to hear all about the best pieces you've seen in the comment section below, as well as hear your thoughts about our picks. Let's start with number four. Parallel Studio made this absolutely delightful short to announce that they are moving offices and it is simply top notch. The cell shaded look and subtle texture along with the limited elegant color palette makes it feel like a few scenes out of a full length film I just wish I could watch. But what really sets this piece apart is the sound design. Give it a listen. It's, it's just so it's good. Just so good. And of course, we have to shout out the attention to detail, like the logo hitting the corner here, the posters, and the bubbles in the water cooler. Just well done, y'all. Great stuff, y'all. Next, with number three. Don't worry, there's still five. We're just we're on number three now. We have one of the shiniest pieces of motion design that I've seen in a long time. It's a motion design personal project called Decision by Rafi Rizki. Rafi uses amazing contrast and complexity of scenes here to create a super visceral and visually striking flow in the animation. Definitely something to think about doing to spice up your next project. The timing to the music is also impeccable, which fits perfectly with his technique of lowering frame rate and blurring and desaturating parts of the screen. This one just feels amazing. Phenomenal work. Well done, Rafi. Next up, we've got Korean animator and designer Wan Il So, otherwise known as Seven. He brought this atmospheric piece journey into the world, and it is well worth the 38 seconds of watch time along with the subsequent hours you spend rewatching it. The transitions in this piece keep you guessing, with each new scene feeling like its own little world. This piece stands out in its depth and its feeling of vastness that he's able to create, all with subtle particles, contrasting scale, and very controlled use of lighting. It's easily one of my favorite pieces that Seven has ever made. Before we get to number one, I want to shout out our honorable mention today, the music video for Arc Patrol, Top of the World. The whole team that worked on this one just killed it and creating a massive amount of atmosphere in ways I've just never seen done before. I mean, just look at those blurs and those incredible vintage handmade feeling effects. There's just so much to dig into here and it's really worth a watch and a listen. A lot of the folks that made the lovely work featured this month also create behind the scenes and break down their work on their social channels. So be sure to check the description below for the links and leave a like and sub on the way. And finally, our first place spot this time goes to Brace by Hugh Vu. This piece blew my mind the first time I watched it and continues to captivate me. It's by far one of the most interesting and unique pieces of motion design I've seen in a while, and it really gets me wondering how people like you come up with such innovative concepts. So why don't we just ask him, how did you come up with a concept for this piece and what was your process like? Right, so yeah, I would punch myself for not mentioning Chris Cunningham. He's my inspiration for this entire piece. I've been watching his work ever since high school. I watched one of his pieces, which is Spectral Musician, which has that exact same uh, track from Square Pusher. And I thought, hey, maybe I can like match this, the craziness of what's going on in the track with some of my ideas for the visual. So then I started out to think of uh, a storyline for it. I remember I've been live streaming a lot last year and I start to think that this is getting on my nerve. I don't want to do live streaming anymore and I yeah. just wanted a way to explain people why. I usually think that live streaming, you do everything naturally, right? Everything comes to you naturally, every idea is um, you engage with the animation all naturally, but as it turns out in my mind, I was like think one, two steps ahead. Even my reaction is not normal anymore. And I just wanted to bring that sort of engagement up. So that's some, something that I really want to uh, convey in the piece. So when you were animating, was it very planned out or was it mostly improv? Yeah, the first half of it was improv, pretty much improv because I wanted the first part to be, you know, the idea what is going on inside the brain. The second half, which is a part of the ball bounce and things happening to the ball and the ball bounced up. I think that's pretty much uh, I had it planned out and sketched out already. I'm curious if there is any more you can tell me about how you come up with those those more improv -y scenes or how you come up with the details to add to the more planned out section. Everything happening in that track is so airtight that I really wanted to, to convey that because I think that having the viewer commented on how oh my god the control of the motion is so close to the to the music I think that's the best compliment I can get. There's some really good details in there. Like I've watched it 
a good few times now at this point. And every time I watch it, I notice something new. And it's just, it's so delightful. Um, now let's get into a little bit of the specifics, namely those impact shock waves. I'm very curious how you did that. I put a displacement map on the, it is. I knew it was displacement map. <laughs> yes, point for Noah. Can you show me like where the displacement map itself is? Right, it's over here. So it's uh, these shape layers that I draw. They're draw just paths? Out. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just strokes. They're paths, and then I uh, animated the scale out. So, you know, when they when you animate it from the middle like that, they shoot out. Ooh. Wow. And that's so smart. That's a really good way of but doing that, actually. It, I yeah, never, that's really ever cool. would have guessed those were strokes. That's very cool. Any last words? Any shout outs you want to plug? What's up? Shout out to my boys in Vietnam, Fustic Studio. Shout out to them. A lot of the best pieces this month were personal projects. When folks are looking to hire designers, people don't go to websites, CVs, or resumes anymore. Social media is by far the easiest way to get in front of those people. And as Hugh showed, sometimes going with your gut and just making what feels most satisfying to you is the best way to separate yourself from the rest of the pack. With so many people getting into the motion design industry, now more than ever before, we're starting to see a new wave of creativity, innovation, and delight. In fact, 4,000 other designers just like you are constantly chatting and sharing their work in the review discord the link to become part of the community is in the description we'll see you next month for the next edition of save as in the meantime be sure to check out our past live streams where you can see the review team make some awesome work of their own and learn along the way subscribe so you don't miss a beat peace cheers